Adriana Cabrera. Can you hear me? Just fine. Yes. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Adriana Cabrera. Um, I am the co-founder of South Central Mutual Aid. I've been organizing in um, the city of Los Angeles for 16 years since I was 14 years old. Um, and during the pandemic, or prior to the pandemic, um, we see you know, that there's a lot of inequity and in access when it comes to affording a place to rent. Um, I myself felt faced housing insecurity prior to the pandemic um, where I was renting, they sold the building, and I went to see about 27 places or housing places um, where I did not qualify to live, and I have a decent job. I work for the city of Los Angeles, so my pay is average, right? And I wanted to find a place in South Central. I, it's the community where I, I grew up in. I had love for my community, and I've been organizing. And so, you know, through all those times that I went to see housing, I came across a lot of people that, um, you know, did not have the possibility to even a, a, afford, you know, or even being considered for the application process. And so we came together to kind of, you know, address the issue. We formed South Central Mutual Aid, which is an autonomous collective composed of indigenous people from South Central LA. Um, these are people who are immigrants. These are people who were formerly um, homeless and are now back on their feet, but it's also people who are struggling with hunger and food insecurity. Uh, um, with housing and food insecurity. So we noticed that our government has failed us. You know, if we don't go that far. Just recently, the FBI apprehended some council members due to corruption and looting that was taking place. So we feel that, you know, when you have communities that have been historically, you know, not been appropriately represented, and then you have some type of representation, and then you see the news, and you see all the pieces together. So we don't have, we, we noticed that a lot of the efforts that were being thrown to helping people during the pandemic were not reaching the people it was supposed to be reaching. So we decided to put ourselves in the forefront. We raised our lives during the pandemic before the vaccine to uh, meet people where they're at. We organized with the homeless encampments. You know, we made maps of every single encampment and identify leaders and heard their struggles. Why were they there? Um, we, through the whole pandemic, um, We've heard their feedback about the approach the LASA and all these organizations are taking to help them, you know, get back on their feet. A lot of it is dehumanizing, you know, and I have to have intervention. You know, I'm, I do it out of love and everybody else there is not getting paid. But we have to have these type of actions because unfortunately the people leading these efforts are disconnected from our community. Um, their approach is like either you take the housing or tomorrow you're going to be meeting a, a sweeping. Right, and people need to be treated with love. A lot of the people facing homelessness are there because life got hard, right? Um, I've come across a lot of people that were suicidal, you know, and I was so thankful to see them the week after because I gave them food, you know, and so small actions like that make a big difference. Um, we're very thankful for Urban Partners who helped us get food. Um, we noticed that right now, like, you know, they, ha they had supporting, um, legislation that gave rent relief, you know, there was an application out there, uh, economic relief for businesses, but all of that was not reaching communities that are low income, that have illiteracy. Uh, people don't know how to fill out those forms. So we were out there hosting workshops, helping people, letting them know this is what this word means. You know, small things like that make an impact. Um, so we were able to also um, provide food to about 5,000 families. We drove to their homes, you know, we also, um, in the summer right now, there was heat waves. We um, collected money to help people just survive the heat waves by having cold water. You know, when it was raining, people were facing a lot of, um, especially illness with the whole pandemic. There was a lot of people who were sick. The homeless community didn't get super sick, but they, you know, they were elderly who didn't have a blanket when it was raining. And so, you know, they, did, they, they get their stuff swept away. We were bringing blankets, and then the next day it will be taken away. Um, we also noticed that there was a lot of crime when we spoke to the homeless people. Some of them get taxed up for having attended the sidewalk by gang members. Um, so there's a lot of crime as well happening. Um, and uh, another thing is, in our communities, we have about 56% of the population who does not have a high school diploma. So it tells you what type of jobs they have. You know, a lot of the jobs are backbreaking jobs that pay the minimum wage. And so uh, one of the solutions that we've seen is to be able to advocate for home ownership, for literacy, 
we want to see more programs that can teach, uh, especially young people, right? Um, because a lot of the people who are in communities that are facing a lot of poverty are people who are immigrants. And um, some of the resources that are being provided by the federal government that's funding a lot of initiatives excludes them from having um, access to some of those resources. So there's a new wave of homeless people that are coming. Um, they're living in their cars, they're living in RVs, and we found that a lot of them are immigrants. Uh, so we also want to uh, be able to provide um, economic opportunities or even education opportunities, um, like you know you mentioned before. And we we were able to mobilize all the the women that most, our group was mostly women for some reason um, that were part of our Southern Central Mutual Aid, and we got them enrolled in community college. They're taking a, a community development course, and so they, there's people that want to progress themselves, but then there's not a lot of funding for them because of migration status, they gotta choose between, you know, um, ha having their baby, you know, um, be left somewhere else. So, you know, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to be here and I hope, you know, that we take um, some action to help these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.